Although wolf attacks are extremely rare today, that wasn't always the case, especially in France, where 7,600 fatal wolf attacks were recorded from the 13th century to the early 20th century. Needless to say, people who called the country home lived in perpetual fear of attack. But no animal struck more fear into their hearts than the infamous Beast of Gévaudan. From 1764 to 1767, the beast was said to have claimed the lives of 113 people in the historical region of Gévaudan, located in southern France. While historians generally agree that the attacks did occur, there's still some debate as to what kind of animal the beast actually was. Was it a large wolf? A wolf dog? A pack of wolves? Or something else? Today on Atlas. The first recorded attack occurred in the summer of 1764. A young woman was tending cattle near a forest in the eastern part of Gévaudan when she spotted the beast coming toward her. Lucky for her, the bulls in the herd managed to scare the wolf away and she survived unscathed. Shortly after that, the beast killed its first victim, 14-year-old Jeanne Boulet, who was attacked while watching livestock in June of 1764. A couple of months later, a 15-year-old girl was killed, and a couple of weeks after that, a 16-year-old boy also died in the jaws of the beast. In September, the beast claimed the lives of a 36-year-old woman and three young people. The deaths were violent and gory. The beast seemed to favor targeting the heads and necks of its victims, sometimes going as far as decapitating them. After the September attacks, it was apparent that the province of Gévaudan had a serious problem on its hands. People were afraid to wander outside on their own, and rumors that the beast was more than just a wolf were running rampant, after survivors claimed that the beast was much bigger than an average wolf. Some people felt that the attacks were being carried out by a pair of wolves, and others went as far as to suggest that the culprit was a werewolf. In October of 1764, two hunters spotted and shot the beast, but their bullets seemed to have little effect on it as it managed to escape even after being shot several times. Shortly after this, search parties were formed by peasants and soldiers, but they were unable to capture the animal. They even went as far as to dress up as women to try and lure the creature to attack, but this didn't work either. The beast kept on killing. One woman was decapitated and her head was found miles away from her body. No one who came in contact with the creature escaped without serious injuries. Other search parties formed. The largest was made up of 20,000 people, but they were unable to find the animal. It was obvious that expert help was needed to capture the beast, which is when King Louis XV stepped in. In February of 1765, the king sent a hunter named Deneville and his men to Gévaudan to kill the beast. Unfortunately, Deneville seemed to anger some of the residents with his overconfidence and demands. They also weren't very effective in capturing the beast. In fact, 14 people were killed by the beast in the first two months after Deneville's arrival. The hunter's incompetence eventually caught up to him, and he left the area with his tail between his legs. By this time, the king had had enough. Hundreds of wolves had been killed, but the vicious attacks hadn't stopped. The king sent his own personal gun bearer, Francois Antoine, to kill the beast. Antoine used dogs to try and track the creature. He worked through the summer of 1765 and on September 20th, he shot a huge wolf that he had at first mistaken for a donkey. The shot stunned the beast but didn't kill it. The large animal rushed toward Antoine but was shot by one of Antoine's officers before it could strike. They put the wolf's body on display and brought in people who had survived some of the attacks to identify the creature. Everyone seemed to be in agreement that it was in fact the wolf that was responsible for the deaths. Upon examination, the wolf was set to measure over 5 feet 7 inches and weigh around 143 pounds. It had a large head and fangs over an inch long. Its body was displayed at the court of Louis XV, but most people who saw it were disappointed. So much lore had been built up around the beast that people were expecting something unusual, but most people who saw it agreed that it was simply a large wolf. Antoine continued hunting for wolves until October 17th. He was hoping to kill any remaining offspring the beast may have had, and at first it seemed like he had been successful, as no attacks were reported for months and Gévaudan seemed to finally be at peace. Unfortunately, that peace didn't last long as the beast seemed to spring back to life when wolf attacks started again on December 17, 1765, and continued for more than a year. 
The killing of the creature that eventually marked the end of the attacks is credited to a hunter named Jean Chastel on June 19, 1767. According to lore, Chastel used a silver bullet to shoot and kill the beast. Like the first wolf that was shot, Chastel's wolf was unusually large. So here's where the story gets weird. Two surgeons who dissected the beast that Francois Antoine had shot claimed that the animal more closely resembled a striped hyena. Although modern analysis of the surgeon's reports seem to agree that the animal's teeth were much more wolf-like, the number of teeth is also more consistent with a wolf than a hyena. There's even some theories that Chastel himself had trained hyenas to attack people and there are rumors that Chastel's family had a pet hyena. Some accounts of the beast include the sighting of a man along with the animal. I have to admit that looking at some of the depictions and drawings of the beast, it seems like a good match. However, you have to remember that hyenas were known at the time, and if it was a hyena, I think people would have recognized it as such. There's other theories that the beast was a young lion, not only because of its appearance, but because of the method that it used to kill its victims. Lions are well known for biting their prey on the neck to quickly cut off their air supply. But like the hyena theory, I feel like people would have also recognized a lion. Others have speculated that the beast was some kind of hybrid, and some of the more fringe theories even go as far as to suggest that it was perhaps an amphicyon, which is an extinct genus of carnivorous animals, commonly known as bear dogs, that went extinct toward the end of the Pleistocene. There aren't any remains left from either of the beasts, so it's impossible to know for sure what they actually were. The stories and accounts of what happened offer some clues, but there's so much conflicting information that it's hard to say anything definitive. What is certain is that there was something very real terrifying the residents of Gévaudan, and today the story is remembered across France. There's even a monument to the wolf slayer Jean Chastel, and a statue which depicts a young woman named Marie Jean Vallée who was said to have driven a spear into the chest of the beast. If you liked this video, please subscribe to Cryptic for more.